it's hundreds of times of trying. Oh, I love it. Okay. They add on a lot of their emotions, how they're feeling at that time, because Chinese art is more about expressing your feelings. Mm. This is. It's, this is what I like. Le legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tea Time with Jesse. I'm your host, Jesse, and today I'm here with Simon Zhu. Hi, everyone. Uh, Simon is an artist here based in LA, uh, living very close to where I live, actually, in downtown LA. A block LA. away. A block yeah. away in downtown <laughs> LA. And um, uh, Simon, why don't you give yourself a little very brief introduction, let our uh, friends uh, know who you are. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Simon, Simon Zhu. Uh, I'm from, originally from Shenzhen, China. Moved here uh, when I was 16 uh, to San Diego for high school, and then I went to college in the Bay Area. And then I moved to LA in 2015, and then been here for almost 10 years. Nice, awesome. So yeah. you've been in LA much longer than I have. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, more local than you, I guess. And um, so Simon's an artist, and the reason he's here is because we are designing a tea set together, and we're also going to be working with Simon, hopefully, on some merch. Yeah. Uh, and so I figured that uh, if we were going to be talking about this sort of stuff anyway, we might as well do it here on the podcast, be able to share with everybody a little bit about what we're trying to make and why I'm really excited to be doing it with you because um, you actually reached out to me uh, on just like social media yeah. and we're like, I think I can see my apartment from the porch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a funny story. I, just, I was just like on Instagram, just scrolling, you know, aimlessly like everyone else. Yeah. And then I saw your account posting about tea. So first, my first reaction is like, who is this white boy? He's like talking about <laughs> Chinese like, tea. Yeah, like what then, is I, going so on? I'm like, but then like for a second I was like, wait, he actually knows what he's talking about. That's good. I'm glad. Because I saw your legit tea set and then I'm like, this is legit. It's like it's good. exactly what you get in China. Mm. And then I start to look at more of your videos and then I'm like, hold on a second. You're on this patio and then I see my apartment <laughs> building right behind it. So I'm just like yeah. You live in downtown too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's honestly pretty rare to see people in downtown that's actually that cultured, in, mm. especially into like tea way, way and to Chinese drag culture. The entirety of downtown. LA. Yeah, no, but but I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of influencers here, but not as many tea people. I think especially <laughs> especially not like traditional stuff. Yeah, you know, here it's more yeah. music, you know, film or like art, yeah. you know. And that was one of the things yeah. I liked about your art. I mean, how would you describe your stuff? But I think that you have a one of the things I liked is I could see you had like a classical Chinese art training yeah. kind of from the beginning. Yeah, so I've been doing Chinese painting since I was a kid. My grandma was the one that actually really kind of pushed me to do more artistic stuff. Mm -hmm. So I've always been artistic, but then I, uh, it's not until college, I went to art school in the Bay Area. Mm. It's not until then I started doing traditional uh, Western oil painting training. At the same time, I met Tibetan mm. uh, Tanka painter. Mm. Uh, his name is uh, Jiam Yam Singye. He's mm. actually one of my favorite person in the world. I oh, mean, wow. I so I, I start to see him every weekend. Every Sunday, I go to his house, hang out with him and his wife, mm. and then they will make me tea, uh, cook me food, and mm. we will paint together. Whoa. So I was kind of like a student that's great like a disciple to him well this, that's a perfect place to segue into the first tea that we're drinking today which is the zhang cha yeah tibetan, zhang he cha. tibetan black tea so this is the tibetan black tea and um so this is one of the new teas that have just come out uh with my new subscription box so if you guys want to be one? in the tea club yeah you can take a look at the bag there um so it's got a it's a darker flavor if you've been familiar with tibetan people i'm sure you've had this before at some point yeah um so this is kind of the tea that is made in those areas and as you were saying they make milk tea with milk it tea, yeah. um how, how would you describe the tibetan tea well tibetan tea it depends on the region central tibet it's more mongolian style it's salty and then added with ghee butter, like yuck butter. Mm -hmm. Other parts of Tibet, I think they just drink it plain or sometimes with sugar. Mm -hmm. But I think for most people, Tibetan tea was known with salt. Yeah. And it's more like a soup. Yeah. I yeah. went there. So I went to Qinghai mm. in, um, in uh, 2013. Uh, I can take the smell, by the way. Ooh, it smells creamy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's nutty. Great. It's very nutty. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very dark. And it's funky. Creamy is a good word for it, actually. It is really creamy. Mm, that's an interesting, it's, it's funny to think of a creamy scent, but it's there. Yeah. The, um, yeah so I went to Qinghai in 2013, and uh, later when we talk about the tankas, I'll actually have a chance to show people a, a tanka painting that I bought in Qinghai on the Tibetan Plateau in 2013. 
But um, when I went there and we had tea, mm -hmm. um, it was very much kind of a part of everyday life. Like whatever meal you were drinking, especially yeah. lunch, you're going to be having this yak butter tea. And um, the yak butter had a very interesting, Taste, strong, strong. It was strong. Yeah. It was not hiding in there. <laughs> it's, it's, it, I think the closest you can find in, uh, in, in the States are going to be like ghee, like ghee butter. Yeah. It's the closest I can think of. I should try to do it with ghee, although it's so, but, it's so romantic it, to try with the yaks. If anybody knows, I have an open question. If you know where I can get yak butter in Southern California, tell me. Because I would love to make a yak butter tea video, but it seems so weak to just use regular butter. I know. Like yeah. I gotta use it's the yak flavorless. butter. Flavorless. That's, that's why we're yeah. that's why we're doing it. So should we try uh, this? Yeah, so this is the wash, so you can give it to the tea pets if you would like. Um, so feel free to pour that over the tea pets. Um, the uh, the Tibetan tea, especially the hei cha. So this is a hei cha, which is a dark tea. The type of tea that in the West is called black tea and the China is called red, red tea. Yeah. And then this is what in China is called black tea, uh, which in English, because to make it even more confusing, we call it dark tea. It's a uh, very <laughs> funky kind of uh, I like it. nutty. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Well, you haven't tried it yet. You got to. But it, just, it smells amazing. Yeah, it the, smells uh, um, very yummy. Yeah. And hopefully this will be a good guide for you as somebody who has um, some interaction with the Tibetan culture to see what you what you think of the, the quality we got. Very dark. Very okay, what do you smell the yeah. the bold flavor? Yeah, yeah. The um it's got a very special kind of scent to it. So okay. cheers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. Well, thank you so much for coming over. Of course. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, Wow. What do you think? This is good. This is, this is, it's, this is what I like. Le legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. legit. This it's, is a good thing. It's so, it's strong, but not bitter. Mm. It, it will be so good with milk. Yeah. So because I think a lot of times people ask me, oh, should you add milk to the tea? Should you add sugar to the tea? And generally I say no, because in the Chinese tea tradition, they don't usually add no, it. Yeah. The interesting thing is once you get into these sort of like nomadic, area, nomadic yeah. groups or ethnic groups within China that drink it different ways. And so for this, because it was kind of almost developed with the Tibetan milk tea culture, yeah. it makes sense to use this for a milk tea as well. Yeah. Although you can just drink it straight. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a fun tea. So, so tell me a little bit more about the, um, your traditional training and, and, your, uh, and your work with the Tibetan artists, because I think that's a fun place to start while we're drinking the Tibetan tea. Yeah, I've been a, a Buddhist since I was pretty young, but I wouldn't say I'm like really practicing it. Mm. It's more like I, my, my, my grandparents are pretty devoted Buddhist uh, believers, and mm -hmm. I do agree with a lot of the philosophies of Buddhism, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely more drawn to the art form. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I was super young, I think when I was seven or eight, my parents took me to Dunhuang. Oh yeah, uh, so explain Gansu. what Dunhuang is. Dunhuang, yeah. it's like this ancient Buddhist cave in China that uh, have all these frescoes of uh, Buddhist murals. Yeah. Uh, from all the way to Tang Dynasty yeah. to like Qing Dynasty. So World Heritage Site, it's like yeah. it's like the place to go if you're anywhere. If you're going to Gansu, if you're going up to that part of China, it's like the 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 thing to see. Yeah, so that's one of my big inspiration. You know, I start to read a lot of books about it, and mm -hmm. then apparently that's a really strong link to European art, mm. especially the lapis they use on the wall, the oh, blue. Okay. And then the people, you know, like you see their outfit. A lot of them. It's wearing this almost like a suit looking dress. Interesting. Yeah, so it's really interesting. You see the culture crossover in this part of Asia because yeah. it's Central Asia. Yeah. And then this area has been conquered by so many different people. You yeah. know, there's so many influence. Um, the uh, Muslim influence, Tibetan influence, yeah. Han Chinese influence, Mongolian influence. I think people a lot of times uh, when they, in the modern age, they think like, oh, exchange between the West and China started after the Second World War. <laughs> like well, it, it's, it's been going on a long time. It's been time. going on. This spot is right in the middle of the Silk Road. Mm -hmm. So you see the influence, the spice from, you know, the spice and then uh, from India, from the Middle East. And then yeah. that's how, also how a lot of the tea got spread to other countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's definitely um, it's it's on that crossroads in that area, yeah. and so so the Buddhist art from there. Describe what is Buddhist art like in general. Like if you for people who have no background in Buddhist art, if you're familiar with uh, I don't know like orthodox icon art, icon mm. painting, it's really similar to tanka. Okay, it's um, you know it's usually what for Tibetan 
Tonka painting that's a lot of influence. Mm. Some of them are more Chinese looking. That's mm. like the eastern part of Tibet. There are it's a little bit more like Chinese imperial court painting. While central Tibet, there are it's more like India and the police. Mm. The kind of Wali style. Mm. Uh, and then in Qinghai, which in Tibet is called Golok, mm. and also Amdo. Mm. Then they have more of their own style going on. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, different region. They're all influenced by different kinds of art. But uh, the tradition I came from, from my teacher, is mm -hmm. from the uh, province of Kang. Mm. It's in uh, western Sichuan right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're called uh, Kangba style. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it Kangba is... Hanzi in Kangba Hanzi. Oh, okay. It's like a word to describe Tibetan men. Okay. So Kangba men are, you know, are famous for being tough and strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so, they have the best milk tea. That's really cool. So <laughs> is, is this style of Tanka that I have that in that style? This is a Ragong Tanka. Okay, yeah, a so lot why of... don't we bring on the Tanka? If we get your on, if you could help us bring on the uh, the Tanka. So this Tanka I bought when I was in Shanghai in 2013, and it's been hanging over my bed. Uh, there we go. Tada! Kaila, okay. Yeah, we can sit here and kind of show everybody the Tanka. So, so what do you know about this? Because my story with this <laughs> is that I, when I was a Fulbright scholar in China, there was another Fulbright scholar who was a year before mine who was researching Tankas and specifically the interaction between the Han Chinese and the Tibetans around and through the art of the Tanka. And while I was there, I was like, these are so beautiful. I'm super going to regret if I don't buy one, even though I had been graduated from college for like one year and had no money. I was like, I'm going to regret if I don't get one. So I got this, uh, I got this Tanka, not knowing that much about it. Um, and so I'm actually kind of fun, <laughs> like maybe you actually know more about my tanka than I do. I'm certain that you do. This so. is a this is an amazing tanka. Yeah. So explain what. This so is. first of all, you see the background. It's black. So it's called hei tang, mm. black tanka. Mm. So that usually for a black background tanka, they use a lot of gold line just to because it, the gold will pop out more if the background is dark. So mm. this is what you can see here. And the deity here is Green Tara, mm. Lü Du Mo. Mm. It's a very popular deity in Tibetan Buddhism. Mm. It's, a, it's a feminine manifestation of Avalokitesvara. Guan okay. Yin. Guan Yin. Guan Yin, like in Chinese tradition, Guan Yin is a female. Mm. Uh, in Tibetan tradition, the Guan Yin Bodhisattva himself is still a man, but mm. he has two versions that's female, and then Green Tara is one of them. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and for those of you who are tea fans, if you guys know our, our Tia Guan Yin, our Iron Buddha, or we call it Iron Goddess of Goddess, Mercy. Yeah. The Goddess of Mercy is Guan Yin, is so Avalokiteshvara. Yeah, it right? is Guintara. Yeah. yeah. So this is, yeah, so this is actually kind of an auspicious thing for a tea guy to have, right? If I know, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, and, and she's green. Yeah, and she's green. So that's, you know, why isn't our tea guy selling more? Like, <laughs> we got to get some work. No, um, but yeah, so this... And the style of painting in general, like, you know, what are tankas for people that don't know? Well, tanka in Tibetan means scroll, uh, rolled up painting. Mm. Because Tibetans are nomadic people. They don't, re uh, a lot of them don't have, they're, most Tibetans are Buddhist. And then usually when you're a nomad, you don't have a shrine room mm -hmm. in your yurt. Mm. So then they will carry a uh, painting of their religious figures, mm. you know, and then they will carry them around when they travel at different areas. So the, the areas. scroll is kind of the nomadic version of yeah. having a shrine. Having a uh, statue, I guess, mm. yeah. And so some of these I've seen in, in, in China, if you go like, you know, I live right next to the Yonghegong Lama mm, Temple, yeah, yeah, which is yeah. a Buddhist temple, their gift shop, it's yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> a lot they'll of have are, a million dollar painting in there yeah. that's the size of a wall. And but has, uh, you know. there, there are a lot of um, not as good quality tankas around, and there are a lot of them are prints, but then this is a this is original one. Yeah. yeah, so this one, it's yeah. very, very, I love it. Yeah, yeah. The real Gong, the, uh, the, the city that we got this from, city is a big word, it's a town. Mm. Um, and uh, the this is apparently where a lot of the uh, the sort of the quang liao like the um, the paints mm. the paint comes oh, yeah. from and so one of the reasons why this city apparently got famous was that the like very the minerals in, the minerals in the soil and the very good colored uh, paint that you can get from the rocks yeah. created a lot of really great tankas and then over time people know that oh this is the place to go to get them and so this I, is, I think another thing yeah. that's very unique about tanka or Asian painting in general, is that before portable paint were invented, they were using rocks, like mm. minerals or uh, precious gemstones. 
grind them into powder, adding glue to it. That's how they paint. Wow. That's why usually a tanka will last for a long time. Mm. Um, and it was funny. I, I took this down for this shoot, and I was looking at it. I was like, has it... Has it kind of like aged a little bit? And, and when I looked through it, I thought it had aged a little, but actually it's not. No, that I think bad it's just dust. I think it's just dust and yeah. like it's held up pretty well for being 11 years old, you mm -hmm. know? So um, that's very cool. I'm going to put this aside now because my arm is killing yeah. me. If, uh, you're on, if you could help us make sure that that doesn't get destroyed on its way out of the chute. Thank you. So yeah. Tanka is um, yeah. scared of water, so yeah, be careful yeah, not to careful speed directly around on the, um, yeah. around the um, the tea table. So, so, so this was sort of your background was in Chinese art. Then you went to Buddhist art, and um, and, and then at the you, same time I was doing oil painting and oil painting at school. But what do you side. think? What advantage does it give you as an artist to have training in both the Chinese and Western schools of, of painting? It definitely make me see things in different ways. Whenever I see a Chinese painting, I would. I would feel like, oh, what is it going to look like if I if it's actually a Renaissance style painting? Mm. What if you paint all these Taoist deities or Buddhist deities mm. in a Renaissance way? Mm. You know, one thing that really kind of that's interesting. I was actually talking. I talked about it. I wrote a research paper about it mm. in college. Is the first Christian painting in China? Mm. They are actually, you know, of Joseph, Mary, and yeah. Jesus, but then in a Chinese style mm. art. So it's very interesting because the the image of Mary, it's a lot like Guan Yin in Chinese art. See? They're both holding a baby. Wow. So I I want I don't know where this uh, come from. You know, in the, in Chinese art, Guan Yin holding a baby. Yeah. I feel like it's you probably have some uh, Catholic influence. Mm. I'm not really sure. Well, this and this is like the the cool thing about when one style of art goes to a second place, they mm -hmm. try to imitate from the beginning. Localize it. And you localize. You like you yeah. know as an artist, you can't come in and just be like you know enjoy Jackson Pollock now. Yeah. Like you can't. It's like you can't do that. Um, so you try to find ways of making it more accessible. I think. Yeah. So when it comes to art, I'm. I feel like I'm always more drawn to traditional, like mm. skillful art. But uh, so in my entire college, I guess I was working really hard to get my foundation mm -hmm. down, like mm -hmm. the traditional skill, how to, how do you portray light? How do you mm -hmm. do uh, metal? Mm -hmm. How do you do uh, sky? That mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But then after, after my bachelor degree, I actually went to a school that, in LA that's only for graphic art from uh, computer. So okay. computer visual effects, <laughs> CGI stuff. So that kind of, so I do that because I want to have my traditional foundation done first and then I want to move to digital art, uh, mm -hmm. more into like industrial design yeah. and, um, uh, and the 3D animation. Well, th and this is one of the reasons why I think that we hit it off when we were starting to talk about yeah. doing our tea sets and our merch. Um, so for a lot of tea stuff in general, like this is kind of behind the t scenes running a tea company sort of situation. I kind of always have two choices for how I'm going to make tea equipment for the site. Mm -hmm. um, choice number one is to go with uh, like the porcelain manufacturers at a place like Jing De Jin. Mm. So Jing De Jin is known as the highest quality porcelain in China, and it's the, been the imperial kiln. Yeah. Um, it's like very, very well, uh, well made stuff. The problem is, if I got everything handmade in Jing Zhejian, every cup would be three hundred dollars, yeah. and like nobody would I actually be able to. I have a few like, from them. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's I think I'm gonna pass that. down to my kids. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, that's the sort of thing you would do, though. It's yeah. like I can get it, but I'm guessing most people on the internet are not going to be wanting to buy one-off three hundred dollar cups. Yeah, especially if you get one from some master yeah. uh, ceramist. Yeah, you know. And, and there are ways to kind of like play this game. Like if you can try to find a master ceramicist whose disciple is yeah, like, their students or their kids. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like this is still very hard. The other way is to think about the um, the types of technology that they have now to be able to do. Uh, painting like these teacups that we have here, these are blue white porcelain, and these are produced by having an art piece that is designed um, and then either 
drawn on paper and then digitized, mm. or it could be designed digitally. Yeah. And then they create um, a special type of uh, sticker, basically, that has the ink in the sticker on paper. You put it on the on the porcelain. Oh, then you fire and it? And then you fire oh, it. Oh, I see. The paper burns away, and the ink goes into the cup. Now, there's many levels of quality of this. Yeah. So, like, you could do really cheaply, cheaply made stuff, or you could make it really well. There's a lot of uh, room in between. But that technique is basically what we have been using because that allows us to get um, tea at a price that's like it's not it's cheap. accessible to most. It's accessible, to people. yeah, and also it's unfortunately like just reality. They're big, they're bulky, they're fragile. It costs a lot of money to ship. The shipping is a big part of the cost. Yeah, but um, but that's going to be the same for anything. But like when we were trying to come up with this original idea. Um, uh, and the idea that I had was like, I want to make a tea set, which is not just a random mountain or this place might not even exist. The tea that's, uh, the tea, that, the mountain that's, that's there. Um, I was thinking, let's make a tea set of Tian Zha Dai Mountain where Sister I lives, where we get our tea from, where we've been working with the farmers and use like, not just any mountains, the shape of the actual mountains, mm. you know, not just any waterfall, like the shape of the waterfall that the place is known for where the ancient tea trees are. You know, not just any tree, like the tea tree that we use to pick the leaves. Um, and so I found this very difficult to communicate to the porcelain people mm -hmm. because they're like, well, what does the mountain look like? I'm like, it, it looks like the mountain in this photo, but where does it go? Like they weren't artists um, that had the traditional painting mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. They were expert at taking the print and getting it onto the porcelain, but they didn't know how to make the thing. Mm. And when we were talking about this, he was just like, let me get a sketch pad. Do you have anything to write? And then like five minutes you did what took like four weeks of communication to try to <laughs> figure out, because you came from it from an artistic yeah, background. Yeah, I'm, right? I'm, I'm pretty quick too. Yeah. yeah, so like we have some updates on that on your phone, which we'll look at in a moment with real time, <laughs> my first reaction to the files that I we're getting. I hope it's going to be good. I think it'll be good. <laughs> But before we get to that, and I actually check the files, what did you think when I pitched that idea to you? Um, I think it's great. I mean, you have to understand Chinese art, uh, it's never really about mimicking reality. You know, mm -hmm. that's the biggest difference between Eastern art and Western art. Mm -hmm. Western art, uh, when you started, it's it served as um, a portrait. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's almost like a, a photograph yeah but Chinese are yeah there are uh, realistic painting but then it was never really that popular that's more of a the emperor you know hire somebody yeah. to paint like a portrait of their wives or something like that but then for the uh, yeah. you know, the, uh, like the literary art yeah it's more impressionism mm -hmm. it's you know they will go to a mountain and then they will look at the mountain meditate on it maybe for like two weeks and then they go back to their study and then they will draw they will paint the mountain from their so they memory. would purposefully not draw it they don't in front they of want the they, they don't want to do it lifelike because it's they they add on a lot of their emotions how they're feeling at that time because chinese art is more about expressing your feelings mm. that's mixed with the scenery scenery is always just kind of like part of the uh the idea mm. so if you are in a beautiful place you could feel sad you could feel happy you know that you can see that from a lot of chinese poem you mm. know they're a lot of them are complaining, a lot of them are whining. Yeah, a lot of ancient Chinese, yeah. but I love this. But then like, they won't... If you look at a lot of ancient Chinese poetry, it's mostly whining. whining like, yeah. But it is, it does have yeah. that like sort of forlorn, there's, I, I think when I look at it, and you can tell me whether this is a good take or not, but when I look at the Chinese art, I think of it as like the use of the space. Yeah. It's about molding the empty space and where to keep empty as opposed to assuming everything should be full and I'm going to draw the details. Yeah, empty space is very important because that's where your imagination continues. Mm. It's a lot about uh, your own feeling that you mix into the environment. Mm -hmm. For this project we're doing right now, because I've been to Yunnan, but mm -hmm. I've never been to Tian Zha Zhai or the specific mm -hmm place you've been to but then i have a general idea because yeah. i know what the landscape of arena will look yeah. like and then i have reference from you yeah so, so we sent some photos yeah. of what we were looking for and then you've been to yunnan and, yeah um, I'm, i drink the tea from the village yeah. so i think i got I, I got a pretty good overall idea of what this would look like and then after that i just kind of meditate on this whole idea uh for a while i started my sketching 
on paper and then I put everything into Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And then I use, you know, AI, I use Photoshop to create what I want. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully we'll like it. Well, let's take a look and we'll yeah, see what we'll it looks it. like. And then yeah. we'll go through, I'm, I'm particularly interested in the process of where the hand painted and where the traditional stuff mixes in with the technology. I think we'll talk about that going forward. But let's take a look here. Real time, seeing it happen. I have not seen these before, so it's possible he's done a terrible job and it's going to get really awkward. I mean, no, I'm sure you did a great job. I'm very excited to see. This is one of the funnest things now about running the, the tea company is like three years ago when I started this, I was like, it was just me in my kitchen or my dad's kitchen during COVID. And now it's like, we get to actually like work with some real artists and I get to show up and stuff has like been done while I was away. So here. Oh, I love it. Okay. We're, we're in great shape already. So we're going to be posting a picture of this on the screen so that you guys can see what we're <laughs> referencing. Um, but uh, just my first take on this. So explain, explain what we're doing, what we're seeing here and, and what we have. So this is Qian Jia Jai. Okay. Mm. This is in an ancient script. This is uh, Zhuan, Xiao Zhuan. Mm. So it's usually more of a elegant, artistic way to fond of Chinese characters. Mm -hmm. So it's actually one of my favorite Chinese characters, mm -hmm. fonds. That's great. And then, so Chinese paintings start from the right and then you, it's like a squirrel, right? You mm. open it and then it goes to the left. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you see is a tea tree. Mm. Uh, I think we talk about how you want them to be cohesive yeah. the, as a whole landscape, but then also you want them to be different fragments of it so you can yeah. extract them. Yeah, so this is part of the engineering challenge of this is that if we were making just one painting for a scroll, mm -hmm. we could really do a lot with it. Part of the challenge, if you see, of making a, uh, if you could hold that, yeah. of making a Gaiwan set is that the image you need for this round cup. There's is, no end, there's no start. There's no it's end, a, there's no start. It's a cycle. Uh, but it's also very different from what you need for the lid, which needs to be composed of different elements. So we were thinking to save to save time and energy, we could create a landscape that was built by multiple fragments. elements and yeah, fragments. Elements. Yeah, but then they're also just a whole landscape. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I really like it. Again, this is the benefit of, again, working with somebody who has the classical experience. Like, I, like seeing it as a story from right to left makes total sense. So we come to Yunnan, we see Tian Jia Jai, yeah. we see the tea tree. So the first thing you see is a tea tree, mm -hmm. and then going, then going this way, that's the waterfall that's yep. in the reference. And then that's more tree and landscape. And yep. then I kind of want to create this little idea of this like a water pond yep. at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, and and then, again, I like again of using the space. There's these kind of are separate elements, but when you zoom in the area, if you're looking at this, like if you were looking at an object, and again, we're going to have this on a round background. So any given portion of this will kind of look like a whole picture. Yeah, and of this, course this is the first yeah, pass. This so, is the first wow. pass, but like this, this totally gives me that water element area and you haven't been to that actual waterfall. I took a video there. Uh, there was a path approaching from the right side from above the waterfall that you kind of see it uh, before you get there, but there is a pond there. I saw and, you, I saw there's a photo of you standing on a little yeah. island like this. And then that, the yeah, waterfall. and so that's kind <laughs> yeah. of the inspiration for this rock, which yeah. is super cool. Um, but, it, but again, as you said, it's, this is not like, oh, that's literally what the waterfall looks like. This is a representation of your yeah. idea of what yeah. the waterfall yeah. looks like. My impression of the place nice. I've never been to. <laughs> so that's great. So, okay, so we and move we on move, from there. And then we move uh, to the left, and then this is Yunhai. Yunhai, right. Heshan, mm. the mountains and the fog cloud. Yeah, and so this was something I really wanted to get in there was the, the sea of clouds. That's um, also, you know, one of the biggest part of Chinese landscape painting. Mm. It's always the cloud, because that's mm. where the empty space, mm. the negative space is. Mm. And yeah. that's where your imagination and and if flows. we we can maybe even show some of the reference photos that I gave you, but like it actually looks like that. It's like <laughs> like it's really cool. You see the Chinese painting style, and then you go to China to the Tea Mountains and to these really far off places. And you're like, oh, I get why they drew it like that. It, yes, it, it actually looks like it actually, that. actually yeah. looks like that. It's not just that it's stylized, although it is somewhat stylized. But people think it's like, oh, there's no way the mountains jut up straight from the clouds it 300 is. feet. It actually <laughs> it looks is. like that. Yeah, and uh, mm. the, the inspiration, the style behind this art, it's Song Dynasty mm. uh, landscape paintings, mm. which is considered one of the most elegant, most uh, profound art style in Chinese history. Mm. So what about the Song style made it so um, powerful? 
I guess you know, you know, in, in the West we'll call it it's more Zen.、Mm. Uh, you know, a lot of the Japanese painting, a lot of the Japanese tea ceremony was spread to Japan through monks that. 他们叫呃，仿宋僧，仿宋僧，或者是遣唐呃，遣唐僧。嗯、mm. ，It's Buddhist monks in in Japan that were sent to China in the Song Dynasty, but then at that time they're they're not allowed to go into the city. They,、mm. If they're a monk, they're only allowed to stay in the monastery in China.、Mm. So everything they learned about Chinese culture at that time, or just、uh, Chan or Zen、yeah. monastery style, that's why they got the whole. Matcha ceremony. Yeah, they they draw on top of the foam. So a lot of the current、uh, Japanese tea ceremony is based heavily on Song of, Dynasty,、uh, Song Dynasty, which is which is this technique is pretty much lost in China、mm-hmm. because we can maybe talk about a little bit about、yeah. the evolution of Chinese tea. Well, yeah, I mean we can. I don't know if we want to go on a, yeah, on a it's, tangent it's, there,、yeah. but it's very interesting stuff. Yeah,、um, we'll do, maybe we'll, we need another episode. Sure, yeah, maybe second half, maybe <laughs>、yeah. another episode about the history of tea in Japan and China. But basically. The、um, one of the things that I like though about learning this sort of history is that、uh, I feel as a tea guy, the history gives me this backdrop where when people ask me questions online, like why is it done this way, even if I don't know the answer, there is a reason. There is a Somebody reason. Somebody、yeah. 900 years ago found there was a reason why they made these aesthetic choices and why they continued through to today. And so it's not like with a lot of stuff they're like. Why are you selling whatever、um, you know hot sauce peach oolong?、Mm. You know you're selling that because you think you can sell it. So like I don't know how I would run a tea brand any other way. Like to be able to have that 2,000 years of like tea history to go back into,、yeah. you can always find inspiration and、um, and it's kind of cool that it'll show up hopefully on one of our tea sets one day. So so in designing this、uh, Yunhai, how do you draw this from a technical standpoint? How do you do the mountains and clouds thing? So for this one,、uh, it's created in Photoshop.、Mm-hmm. So I do. I have a brush that's a watercolor brush. Okay. You know, it's not a physical brush, but、mm-hmm. I have a Cintiq. So I do everything, you know,、mm-hmm. on the tablet.、Mm. And I, what I do is that I draw one portion of this mountain. Yeah. And then I use the AI generative fill、mm. that's provided by Photoshop. We started like last to year. To create more. To cr- so basically, I would just circle this area. Right next to where I painted, what、mm. I the mountains, and I said,、uh, replica or copy the style I created here、mm. and make more. So for of these mountains,、um, let me take a guess.、Mm-hmm. My guess. Yeah, is which one do you this, think I actually? I think use this one is real. The 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 one that were real. I don't know. Well, it's real. Painted by the one hand. painted yeah, by yeah, hand. Yeah. I think this this big peak over here and then over here. That was my guess. Yeah, yeah. That, this that one is. And then some of this are this. So this in between. So basically, I created. This is two. Okay.、Mm-hmm. This is the Yunhai.、Yeah. This is the mountain. And then whatever that's in between are generated feel. Interesting. Okay.、Yeah. So then, how do you decide where you're going to draw the line on what you want to do by hand, what you want to do by computer, what you want to do by AI? Are these hard lines for you, or、no. it's all soft? It's 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 soft. You know, it's more like I will use.、Uh, I will paint. I will draw. The key point of what this one fragment is about. Let's say this one is about mountains. I will draw the mountains, and then maybe just you know I will draw maybe thirty percent of the frame by hand,、mm-hmm. and then I will generate the rest of the area、mm-hmm. using、uh, using AI. Does it work every it, time? No, it doesn't it, work every time. So like, how do you like? How does it how does it work? Like, what is your process for yes, no? Well, I would say it's it's it's. Hundreds of times of trying to fix it because your next AI is going to be based on your previous AI. So if I say if I generate、uh, this area, I say oh, Qinghua style mountain, just like what I did be-、uh, below here.、Mm-hmm. Usually, it will give me three options, and then usually, I probably won't even pick one of them, and、mm-hmm. I'll just keep doing it until I get the one I like. And then based on and I, I'll keep so, that. So it's almost like. You're a little bit blind as the creator too. Like you, you made what you wanted. Yeah. But then to have it finish the rest, you may not get that for the first try, the second try, the third. No,、try. you won't. Yeah. Do you think it's just easier? Is it still easier to do this than to just draw them all? It let me explore more with different、mm. composition, different style, especially composition wise. I think、yeah. that's very important. Yeah. Because you could always decide to. Have、yeah. it create a composition. You say, I like where it put the stuff, but not what it looks like. But、yeah. now I can actually draw that. 
Yeah, or you can. You you have to think about Chinese are traditionally you can't. Once you put the dot or put the ink on the paper, you can't change it anymore.、Mm-hmm. There's no eraser. There's no going back button you can press. Yeah. So usually everything is done in your head.、Mm. So and then when you do it, that you know all you need to know is that, that you can't regret anything.、Mm. But I guess what's good about digital art or AI is that they let you explore options.、Mm. You know, it give you more creative、uh, freedom. To delete what you didn't like,、mm. or to choose which one you prefer more. Do you feel like it's killing the nature of the expression to to be able to have that safety? I mean, we're in a digital、uh, time right now. You know, of course, you know, if we're talking about fine art that you don't want, it's if you, it's more of performance art that you don't want to show any regret. You don't want to go back anyway. Yeah. Then、uh, that's that's another thing. But then I feel like if it comes to design work, especially. Like what we are working、yeah. on, you ha- we have to consider the how easy is it going to be for the、yeah. artist, for the for the people to put it on a ceramic. Yeah. And then if it is something that you, you need to want, be able to make,、changes. you need to make changes. You、yeah. have different plans. You know, plan A, plan B, plan C, and then there's going to be a lot of revising things. So I think when it comes to that,、yeah. yes, AI tool is a、yeah. great tool for designers, especially graphic designers, artists、mm-hmm. to explore. Do you worry that like one day you're just going to lose your entire job as a graphics person to AI? <laughs> like it'll just get so good, you just、uh, I want to like、uh, like we tried like just out of curiosity if we just went to the basic AI things and、yeah. said make a blue white porcelain style mountain of blah 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 in Yunnan with a tea tree and a waterfall and we can show you guys the results. Yeah, the art style I I, I mean it looked interesting, but it was not possible to do what we wanted to do fully by AI. And I wasn't, I wasn't ever making those thinking we would,、mm-hmm. um, because I think making AI as an artist myself, you know, I'm I'm really a full time comedian and performance artist that it just、yeah. turns out you don't get paid for that. So, it, <laughs> you know, I I sell tea as a way to be able to do what I want as an artist.、Um, and LA is expensive、yeah. city. LA is expensive, and、yeah. also just like.、Um, I learned from being a comedian in China and having two million followers, and waking up the next day and still having made no money. That it's like you have to sell something. Unfortunately, as a reality, as an artist, you have to sell something. Whether that's your time、yeah. on somebody else's project, whether that's a ticket to a live show, whether that's an online class, whether it's a box of tea. There's no point where you just get so good at making your content that you just make money on the content. You know, you can make money on YouTube clicks, but if you had enough YouTube clicks to make a living, you could be doing any number of other things to support your art. Yeah.、Um, so, I, I, as an artist, I don't like this future where I'm thinking whether artists are going to get replaced by the AI. But,、mm. do you think that's like actually anything related to the reality we're living in, or is it just like people's deep-seated fear of being replaced, like any type of worker would be worried about being replaced by machines? I think. Every time when a new technology was invented, there is going to be people getting putting getting put out of work.、Mm-hmm. You know, throughout the history, you know, art is also always evolving. When technology、mm-hmm. was invented, like portable paint, you、yeah. know, that was a there was a new thing that was invented. I think in the 18th century. Don't quote me on that. Yeah.、Uh, but then that changed, the, you know, the, the yeah, photography when it、yeah. was invented. Then for a long time, people think, oh, there's no need for. Painting,、yeah. because you know you can just take a photo. But then we still see that. Then that's the reason why Western art, after photography, Western art start to become more impressionism.、Mm-hmm. You know, more like do Asian. Do stuff you can't do. Yeah, exactly. There's still always going to be a human element、mm-hmm. in the art creation process. I, I don't really think technology is going to overshadow that. Even、mm-hmm. though that right now at this moment, I do feel like a lot of artists are getting put out, are losing their jobs because、yeah. let's say. You know, like a Hollywood film company, they used to、yeah. have a whole art creation team.、Yeah. Now they probably just need two people to、yeah. finish a whole art direction for a project, which is kind of sucks because、yeah. that's kind of my job. I'm an、yeah. art director, but then at the same time, I feel like it is competitive. It's getting more competitive, but then the good ones will always stay、mm. because the technology can never replace. The human elements, yeah, this in, true skill in art. It's almost like、uh, it's almost like in journalism, like they've experimented with AI writing write-ups for baseball games. Because if you look at the the baseball game score, you can say, oh, you can get some basic storylines of like Red Sox came back to win in the eighth inning rally, and like they can figure that out as a computer and write a basic description of a baseball game. But 
So if you're a mediocre journalist writing sports games, yeah. you're going to lose your job. Yeah. But if you are actually really good, ironically, those people are now more valuable than ever. That's exactly what I think. You know, I think it's more like a hence. Your work, especially if you're a good artist. Yeah, if you can only hire two and you're a legit artist. You're going to hire studio, the best ones. You hire yeah. the best and you keep them happy. It's more, I, I definitely think the AI technology is more like a filter. It will filter out a lot of mediocre artists, uh, mm -hmm. which is also kind of sad because there are artists, because art is kind of hard to judge yeah. what's good, what's bad. Yeah. But I feel like now it's a time for artists to really think about your style and mm -hmm. then what you're bringing to the table yeah. with the help of AI. Yeah. Um, I think that like that, that, and that to me, like, I think there's a lot of uh, negativity around uh, the use it's of a fear. technology. It's a fear. Yeah. yeah. And I get where the fear is coming from. Uh, and, and why, this is why my yeah. general idea of like um, what I wanted to do on this project with you and including mm -hmm. doing this podcast, I really feel, and this is a feeling, I don't know this, but I feel like as AI stuff becomes more in use, we have two options. One option is to ignore the fact that this technology exists and get wiped, mm -hmm. which is not really like, unfortunately, that's a bad way of saying it. But like, if you ignore oncoming technology, like you don't want to be a portrait maker in the 1800s and be like, I don't admit photography exists. Like you, like mm -hmm. that's not a good plan to just refuse to deny the existence. That's a really you know? <laughs> good way to put it. Yeah, or even with people now, like I know people in who are entertainers who like don't realize that TikTok is bigger than television, and they want to make it in television. I'm like, TikTok is straight bigger. Like you can still do television, but you don't want to be that guy in radio that was like, um, oh, uh, like I don't think television is going to be a big thing. I only do radio as a matter of principle. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to do it as a matter of principle. So, but then the second option, but then so how do you do it? And so I have this feeling when it comes to AI and art and culture, mm -hmm. the thing that is going to be most valuable is the transparency yeah. to say, here's how we did this. One, I tried doing it purely by AI. It didn't work, but we found certain things. Two, we found a, uh, an artist to be able to work with that uses traditional aspects here and AI aspects there. And then three, even other technology like we sell these cups. I don't say they're hand painted, but I think it's important people know they're not hand painted. But there's a reason they're not hand painted because I don't want them to cost four hundred dollars each. You know, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. a. It's not like I'm hiding anything. It's like I really think that this is the best way to run the type of tea house I would want. To well, run, the stuff that you know? we were designing, it's far from mass production. I would say because yeah. we're not still, making. They're <laughs> still created by artists. You know, yeah. they're still. There's still human thoughts put into it. Yeah. It's just like the way that we do it, it's a lot more efficient. Yeah. It's like, you know, this podcast we're doing. Mm -hmm. Now we're just doing it, shooting yeah. it on camera, on phones. But then 2,000 years ago, if you want to do this, you need to gather a group of people and to tell them yeah. about your tea. For, yeah, for, I mean, for 2,000 years ago, even a couple <laughs> years ago. You need to have a film camera. To yeah, or, or like, you know, we're shooting this on three iPhones over there and one really nice camera that ironically is, uh, is shooting the tea because it has the best <laughs> zoom. But like, even with the AI editing now, like the first draft of a lot of our, our uh, podcasts are put together by AI, but we have a real human editor to be able to look at that and then to re-edit and also to do the shorts, which the AI doesn't do a good job on. Um, and again, it's like, it is that efficiency sort of thing. It's yeah. like the biggest challenge of being an internet creator is the internet is never, is always hungry. The internet never has enough to eat. If I could come out with 10 videos a day, it would not be enough. And so you need to balance being able to come up with enough stuff that you can continue to feed the engine, um, which, you know, is a big, that's another question about whether it should be that way or not, but that's the reality. If you make your living online, you need to come up with a lot of stuff, but also the quality can't slip. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's the same thing here of trying to figure out how do we make a, uh, like a unique Gaiwan set Mm -hmm. that is going to be real art, but is, is coming at a, a price that people would be able to figure it out. Like, yeah, you know. yeah, something, and also I just feel like um, when it comes to uh, AI technology, I feel like, yes, there is fear, there's a lot of misinformation around there, but then I feel like just go and explore, you know, like, because mm. for me, I guess because I am a 3D artist and a tr traditional artist, I'm always trying to play around uh, to see what's really going on with technologies. Yeah. Therefore, I can actually 
understand it better yeah. you know but then if i'm just like so scared of this new technology i don't want to touch yeah. it because i'm so scared it's going to take over my job that i would never really know what this is about yeah so i feel like yes there is uncertainty about what ai is going to do you know especially to artists to creative people but if we just reject it, if we just don't want to explore it at all, then yeah. how are we going to know? Well, it's a classic head bad. in the sand. Like, you know, they, like you can't stick your head in the sand and then say nothing else exists. Yeah. And, and so if somebody is a visual artist that is looking to explore AI and has that open mindset, what's a way they could do that? I think, you know, never really give up the foundation of art creating. You know, like for me, I'm very comfortable using AI because I have a foundation in traditional painting. Mm. If somebody come over to me and accuse me of, you don't even know how to paint, you're just yeah, using yeah. AI, <laughs> I can show them my art. You know, I've, I have yeah. tanka art that I created, I have oil painting I did, you know, so I think, but then also what it's art, you know, like Jackson, it's Jackson Pollock art, also art, because yeah. if you see it, if you don't like it, you can say, my five-year-old yeah. can also do yeah. the same thing. So mm. I feel like modern art is already kind of you know, like a Dadaism, it's yeah. literally making fun of traditional art. Yeah. So there's so many, art, it's an open book, you know, you can, mm -hmm. today, I think people are so open-minded about what art is, so why not be open-minded about what AI is making, you mm. know, as long as you let people know yeah. that don't make an AI art and pretend that this is yeah. what you created with, you know, oil, yeah. you know, or at least make something don't use the AI uh, generated art as the result of your art. Rather, actually, to use it to enhance your art or to make it, you know, 30% of your art and then you can bring it to another level based on what AI provide you. Mm. That's kind of how so I the, see it. The classical training is kind of the thing that makes you comfortable putting your foot into the yeah. pool. I also think you know you're not going to drown. The worst case, the yeah. worst case scenario, you can, you can get out of the pool completely. I also think, you know, with AIs, technology, there's going to be a big comeback of traditional art. That's mm. what I believe. I feel like as, you know, AI kind of democratizing art right now, it's making, it's decentralizing art, it's making art accessible to everyone. Now everyone can make art. Yeah, I mean, like, think of how great YouTube is, or TikTok, yeah. like, everyone it's can easy make a to channel. forget, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. back even, whatever, 15 years ago, like, starting a media channel, like, you needed venture capital money, Yeah. you needed Agency. big agencies, uh, Representer, people vet, like, you. lots of gatekeepers, yeah. you could make the show, and those have gatekeepers, you could try to get it onto a satellite, and that yeah. had gatekeepers, like, but the um, the democratization that the technology has given, I think is just a straight up benefit. Yeah. Um, it's given rise to people being able to, you know, put up some stuff on their wall and be able yeah. to reach it people. It sucks that less people are watching CNN or Fox News. Yeah. But, but I feel Does like it? this is going <laughs> to, I, I don't know. But, like, but I'm saying people have more options thing. now. No, people have more options you know, now. Like I don't really watch mainstream news at all. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, I just watch YouTube. And, yeah. <laughs> So we have the Yunhai, the Sea of Clouds, we uh -huh. have the mountains. And, and then, then that's the, uh, the, do we call it a chalet? Because in Switzerland, they would call it a chalet. chalet. Yeah. We were trying to figure out about how to call the uh, Zhongyuan, like the- Yunnan, uh, okay, Yunnan, it's like Switzerland. Yunnan yeah. is the Switzerland of China. That's an interesting way of looking at it. And like they the, even have cheese. Yeah, they, they have even, cheese. <laughs> they, they, have the cheese. Mount, they have cows everywhere, and then the, the snow-capped mountains. Even their architecture, you know, like the yeah. wooden, um, uh, houses. It's yeah. it's very Swiss. -like. It's funny. It's it's like Switzerland if South Switzerland was a tropical rainforest. Yes, it's, like, it's kind of <laughs> like. But that. it has the high snow mountains and the mountain uh, area mm -hmm. and glaciers. Um, the glaciers, the valleys. I mean, when we were in Chandradai Mountain, like we went to a area to to drink the uh, Danju, the single tree tea, mm. Puar tea. Mm. So they would take all the leaves from one tree, press, process it in one batch. And so we know exactly this tea comes from that tree. And it was really cool. The actual area, like we, we set out in the car to go there. Mm. And he pointed across this like giant, like, you know, there's this giant ravine between two mountain ranges. And he's like, we're going right there. I'm like, oh, are we almost there? Like, no, it's going to be 45 minutes of driving. Because <laughs> you got to drive all yeah. the way down into the valley, all the way up the mountain. And so even though it's geographically very close, the mountains made it th so that these different yeah. villages are it's not. It's very dramatic. The it's very dramatic. There, yeah. I love you, man. I mean, one day, jessiesttours.com, you can go and sign mm -hmm. up for the email list. If I ever lead T-Tours, I'm going to email that list. Don't ask me when it's happening. Don't ask me how much it costs. I know nothing. I know nothing at all. 
All I know is that if I do it, I will be emailing that list. So if you want to get on that list, jessiesdetours.com, no www. Yeah, um, if, you, if you like tea, if you like wild mushrooms, oh, crazy yeah. fresh fruits, and you know, out of this world landscape, Yunnan, right. Yunnan is the place to be. They right? always they, they always told me they're like Yunnan, Thai, Chubliao, Yunnan. It's like you can't get out of Yunnan because they think that so much of it is the fresh mushrooms you got today, yeah, yeah. the fish you got here. Yeah, that's a little true. bit that's exaggerated. True. But it's hard to have a Yunnan restaurant out of a Yunnan because yeah. you can't just you just can't get the ingredients. Yeah, but anyway, enough. Uh, <laughs> I would talk about Yunnan all day. Obviously, for people who don't know, that's where we get all of our puar tea from. It all comes from Yunnan. We also have a lot of red teas. We have white teas that are launching soon from Yunnan. Uh, we have a lot of really great stuff from Yunnan. Uh, so, okay, so, so here's, we've looked through this here. Um, my notes, uh, can I give some notes? Yeah. Okay, so my notes here. First of all, I, like, I love the seal script. I think that that's good. I like the idea of having the seal script there. Um, I would add to that somewhere on here mm. the image of our stamp. This is our, our, our Zhang, like our company you know stamp. The, you know, there are different places you can use this kind of seal. So, so, where, where, so where should so, we put the seal? So usually, uh, one, it's like the official seal. Yeah. They usually put right, because you, usually you sign it, right? Yeah, yeah. Then you have a personal seal hmm. that you put right next, yeah. below your own signature. Hmm. Like Jesse, you know, yeah, yeah. in the year 2024, and then you put your step, yeah, stamp on. Yeah, then yeah. there's what we call Xian Zhang. Casualty seals that you can put everywhere. Mm. You know, like the Chinese Emperor Qianlong. Yeah, he was. He's he, famous for putting his seals everywhere. He just stamp I mean, everything. Just like stamp everything exactly. with that. Exactly. Yeah, but uh, definitely, I think we're gonna incorporate a lot of. We this can incorporate seals. the yeah. seal into the into the bed. So that's one thing that we could do. Yeah. Second uh, note is uh, we can even make this a lot bigger. Yeah, you we know can. how Qianlong he had to put in the, right in the middle of the oh, really? best place. Yeah, like, but a lot of people don't Qianlong like Qianlong. Qianlong was not subtle with his. He's not subtle. He's he's in your face. Yeah, we should have a whole like um, that. That seems like it'd be the topic if we were like a Qing Dynasty court podcast. And then we would get arrested yeah, yeah, yeah. and beheaded. <laughs> But it would be a great, <laughs> if anybody wants to see us pretend to be Qing Dynasty illiterati court scholars and run a podcast on that, comment in the comment section below. <laughs> that would be the most uh, narrow channel ever. I know. Um, it's uh, well, cosplay. Yeah, that would be, um, uh, is anyone doing that in China, running podcasts? Probably like, not Qing Dynasty, just because of the, yeah, the yeah. Qing Dynasty's men's hairstyle, yeah, if you don't yeah. know. It's one of the most notorious yeah. hairstyle in the history the, of China. The, the queue. Yeah, the, yeah. Because the, the, traditionally, the Han Chinese men, they have full, full long hair and they put a bun, mm. like a hairpin on the top. Mm. But then the Manchur Qing Dynasty's Manchurians, they, have, yeah. they always come across with the craziest hairstyle. Yeah. So they would shave half of the head mm. and they have a ponytail in the back and then braid it into a braid. Mm. So yeah. in any case, uh, we're not planning on launching that podcast anytime soon. So. Maybe in 20 years, uh, maybe everyone's in 20 hair years, gets long exactly. enough. Yeah. No, my hair, you see, I mean, you look at this. <laughs> it doesn't get long. My hair just goes out. I have the Jufro, the Yo Tai Shi Bao Da Tou. The uh, like, um, I try to explain to Chinese friends. I, I saw a Chinese friends. Oh, you come with Hova? Like, no, no, it's like this. It's it's, like it's, this. It's, for for a period of time, that's what's trending. In China. Yeah, like no, everyone wants like, to perm their hair. She was like, "My friends have made a lot of hair. Your hair will turn like that. It's very painful. I'm like, I don't feel happy at all. <laughs> like this is um, especially go outside. Because people in China, they think <laughs> their hair is too thick and flat. They they want some volume. To yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I got the volume. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but volume. Um, so yeah, I really like it. I think this is the direction that we should be going. A um, couple things I could think of is if there's a way of making the tea tree more clearly a tea tree, mm. um, because the tea tree shape. I guess because I've never really to, seen a tea tree. We'll send you some more pictures of okay. it. They tend to be kind of. They're the bushy. Are they the, kind of bushy? The ancient tea trees are so you can grow tea as bushes, and we have bushes. But um, the ancient trees in particular, the ones that have grown wild for thousands or mm -hmm. over a thousand years, these are the ones that we get our tea from in Yunnan. Okay. They tend to kind of be really thick at the base, sometimes with multiple branches coming mm. out at the bottom, like two or three trunks that okay. have kind of grown together. And then they have uh, relatively few leaves mm. because the, um, they said it's like, you know, you'll it's more like branchy. branches. 
there are obviously many different styles. Style, like, you know, yeah. it's a tree, so it grows naturally, but we'll send you some things of that. I actually think it looks really pretty here, so I'd like to kind of keep the aesthetics of it, but we'll just change of, the shape a little bit. Yeah, like when I see when I see this here where it kind of goes off to the right, and then mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff supported by this one spindly uh, thing. That doesn't, when I see that as a tea guy, I'm like, that doesn't look like a tea tree. I see. They kind of go up. Yeah, because I actually do this by hand mm. because we do a lot of trees like this in Chinese painting. Mm -hmm. And then it's usually like a cypress tree yeah. or like a pine tree, like a bonsai tree. Yeah. So, and, and so this looks really pretty as that sort of style. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so I think that would at least be worth experimenting with. Mm -hmm. Um, I really like that tree. I wouldn't mind if that tree was here on the mountain. We can or copy the other. Yeah, we can find that. a way to use the art. <laughs> um, that could be a thing. You know, this all looks really pretty. I think this is going to look very good as like a wraparound thing. And that'll be good for our Gaiwan, of course. Mm -hmm. So like, so this sort of thing that we're doing. Uh, and then it'll also be really good for the cups. And, and I like also how we have these gradients from heavy blue to lighter blue to white. Indigo. Yeah, this yeah. sort of in the middle area I really like because I think that that will look really good. I would even say you could experiment well, I guess it'll look good. I like how dark the waterfall gets mm -hmm. in order to show the. Well, you want to see the contrast, down. yeah. Yeah, so that's really nice. Like you know, like the water here is a perfect example of you know negative space. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't you don't need to draw a waterfall. Yeah. You just need to draw the mountain and then leave and the waterfall the negative just comes space. Out. Yeah. Then for the uh, villages over here, um, I almost wonder whether. I don't even know if it'll show up at the size, but I wonder whether we should have some people drinking tea in that little hut. So that's the thing about scale. So Chinese art, they don't really have perspective. Mm. So everything is kind of like just in the distance, but even though that sometimes they will draw a little person, mm -hmm. you know, in the middle of the yeah. landscape, but this is so small. So I wonder if it's actually going to I don't know. It may not yeah. read. But I, I even think for the houses you see here, it's yeah, actually out of proportion. Small. They're but then compared to the landscape here, look at that. They're big. Yeah, they're because huge. Because this house is like yeah. almost as big as the waterfall. Yeah, but it's... But it, that's the only way you can show it. Yeah, but also because this is on a round thing, you'll never see those two things together. That's so true. It's possible that if we have this as what's being seen, that people might be able to read a little person in there. I don't know. It's yeah. just an idea. I can maybe do shadows of little yeah. people. You know. So I think that's great. And then um, the last thing to look at would be these roofs. We can just do a basic check to see... Uh, whether it's the Bai people or the uh, or Miao people or some of the people in the mm. areas, whether there's any sort of special type of roof. Um, yeah, actually, look it up. I don't think there's anything quite unique about their roof. Mm -hmm. They're not as ornamented as Han Chinese roofs. Mm. They're very straightforward. Mm. That's what I see. They're okay. just kind of like... Great, so as long as we've checked it. Okay. That's, the other thing. <laughs> that's the other thing, again, from this sort of like me... Uh, this is my, I feel, my responsibility for being somebody who's making English language content about this. Like, we could totally AI a roof that looks Chinesey and no one would ever know. Yeah. But for me, it's important that if we're doing yeah, this. Yunnan roof specifically. Yunnan yeah. roof By specifically. ethnicity, yeah. Yeah, and make sure that it is of the same type that we're actually making. Yeah. Um, so, what do, you, what do you feel about the result here? Are you happy with how this turned out? I actually try to wrap this around, like, in, I, I load this photo into 3D. I try to wrap it around something that's kind of like a cylinder. I think it looks pretty cool because if you think about it, when you look at a cup, right? Yeah. Oops. You're looking yeah. at segment by segment, you know, fragment you by fragment. Yeah, you only see so like when a, you let's say when you yeah. look at this area, you are not going to consider. Wait, does it match with the here? Yeah. It's more like you're just focusing on this area, but then you you like this area, and then you move on to the next. Mm -hmm. So it's more about this illusion of passing through space and time. Mm. So you see here, and then you move to here, you see, oh, we're, we, got, we went from the mountains to the Yunhai, to the cloud, and then here you see a little village. So when I'm looking at this village, I'm not gonna care too much about this mountain right here. Mm. That's how usually when Chinese people, uh, when they uh, look at like a scroll painting yep. or like a fold yep. painting, that's how they see it. It's, they're one, they're one thing, but then also at the same time, they're its own individual yeah. little uh, areas. 
So I think I'm pretty happy with the outcome of this. But then, of course, yeah. the uh, comments you have, you know, it's really valid. And I think we can yeah. work on this a little bit more together. Yeah, I think so. And so we're planning again to have this set. My, my goal is to try to have that set available by Christmas. We're also looking to maybe do some merchandise because um, people have asked for Jesse Seals merch for a long time. And I'm like, I'm not a fashion designer. So like we actually really did try within our team to kind of come up with merch ideas. And we even had everybody look at merch they liked and blah, 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 and send in PDFs. And in the end, it kind of just faltered because I didn't have a direction for where I wanted to go with it as like as the lullbound or whatever. So mm. this is why I actually really like the idea of with working with you on merch is because I can say, okay, great. I have an artist who's helping me figure out the merch <laughs> and I don't need to be a graphic designer or a fashion, you know, I'm not a fashion. You just, like, you just give comments. <laughs> I don't know. Like you think I would like think ahead of time of what I'm going to wear before we have people come with four cameras. I don't know what I'm wearing <laughs> until the morning of. So like, I'm not the right guy to do that, but I, I think I am the right guy to kind of figure out how the T fits in. You know what, what your fans like. Yeah, and, and what you guys yeah. would be interested in. So um, let's uh, share a little bit about what we're thinking of the merch. And none of this is set, but we want to be bringing everybody w along for the ride. Yeah. But what, uh, <laughs> what right now is the current thinking that we might do for merch? Um, you want to share first or should I just start uh, talking? I, actually, <laughs> I, wanna, I want you to share because I want to know what you think we've discussed. <laughs> like it's it useful as a creative tool sometimes. Well, it's we like, have yeah. we have a couple ideas. Yeah. Uh, this style. Let's talk about style. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking something kind of like a twenty a nineteen thirties Shanghai uh, commercial poster. Yeah. You have that woodblock print uh, style. You know, that's something that's more from like a mass production. Mm. You know, in the 30s Shanghai style. Yeah. So you uh, kind of want to have some slogans, yeah. some words, some characters. Uh, that's also a time where China is embracing a lot of Western culture. So yeah. I think that's going to be an interesting crossover of culture mm. we see there. But then the content of it, uh, we're thinking, we're, we have two ideas. One is yeah. the six different kind of Chinese teas. Yeah. You know, from white tea, green tea, qing cha, all the yeah, way yeah. to black tea, to poor tea. Yeah. Or we can do it more based on the ceramic style of different kiln in China. Yeah. Ru Yao, Jin Qingzi, yeah. uh, all kinds Jian of Dan. different, yeah, yeah. All, all kinds of different ceramics. So we have a different, uh, we have a couple ideas that we yeah. can explore with. I think eventually whatever that's the most visually stunning and then that communicate better with your audience will yeah. win. Yeah, I hope so. And, and we're planning on making, I think, t-shirts or a T-shirts, hats. Yeah, um, t-shirts, uh, hats, maybe a maybe tote, tote bag. bags. Um, yeah. Also thinking of maybe putting together stickers or postcards or... Um, postcards for sure. It's on our uh, potential things to have the art featured in like a tea journal. So like, you know, when you have your tea time, you'd be able to write what tea am I having? What year is it from? What vendor is it from? Tasting notes. Postcards for the holidays. Yeah, stuff like that. So we're, we're looking into a bunch of options for it. I think part of the other challenge of this is that I have to start essentially a clothing company now because a lot of people solve their merch problems online by they just upload it to a website and then they can get the stuff made one at a time. And that's really good for, for a practical purpose of like getting started soon. But I'm worried that if I start that, either we succeed or we fail. If, yeah. we, <laughs> if we fail, we, fa we failed already whatever no, if you we need succeed, to in yourself. yeah i think we'll i think yeah. people will like them people have been asking for them for a while but if we succeed then we need to switch up the whole thing because we would want to make more of them and we have a shipping chain set up from china so the key i think is to make sure that we get quality stuff from china and um and that's doable it just takes like as we were talking about before we need samples from the factories we need to see the worksmanship we need to make sure we have some sort of connection with them that we can actually make sure that our stuff gets made because we're not going to be making millions of these shirts. So yeah, and yeah. I'm I'm pretty confident because I've been yeah. making merch for. Mm -hmm. Can I even mention their names? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you want, <laughs> I you know I worked for uh, Paul Pierce, which is an NBA player before yeah, I'm big working Celtics on fan. his uh, his merch and his brand. And after that, I was an art director for a lot of uh, for public companies. So. I don't really think there's going to be a problem of yeah. uh, selling uh, yeah. whatever we design. Yeah. So the hope the hope is is I, I think this sort of collaboration way of doing things it just feels it's, better it's exciting. to me. Yeah. I think it's exciting and it's also it's good because we can come out with something that's going to be kind of like Jesse T House spirit, 
but it's not going to look like the other stuff that we came up with with our branding. And I actually like that because I don't want to yeah. like, what do we like? If I sell Campbell's soup, I don't want to have a shirt that just has a Campbell's soup can on it. It's like I'm just putting a picture of what I sell on the thing. Like I want it to actually be something fun that people would yeah, want to Yeah, there will wear. definitely be a lot of my personal touch in uh, the artwork I'll be creating for Jesse. And then I see it as a collaboration. It's not really like I'm doing this for Jesse. Yeah. It's more like we're working on That's this idea want. together that we're having have. You know, I have my artistic take and then... Jesse is just more like he give me advice yeah. on, you know, what his audience want, what I get a lot of market, you know, research from yeah. Jesse. And then I would just take care of the artistic part of it. Yeah. And the cool thing about the Internet now is like we actually made some uh, polls on, oh, yeah. on Instagram and on uh, YouTube. The YouTube like uh, posts function, actually, they a lot of people vote on these polls. I'm like would you like like oversized t-shirts or regular sizes and like you know people we can actually get feedback so if you see anything like that as we're trying to make the uh, merch help us out like you know throw in a vote there because it's like um the the upside of the way that i do the whole of the tea business is we get everything formally imported taxes paid everything is like here and it's in america and so you can get your tea if you get anything on the site it's shipped off within two days it like we, it, as far as I know, we're the only people doing that at any sort of scale for, for the US and we're opening up new warehouses in the EU and UK. But the downside of that is I have to buy all the stuff before it comes here. I can't make the one at a time. And once we've committed, we're kind of committed to doing it. So I love having at least a note from you guys saying that. Yeah, please tell yeah, us tell what us you what like. want to do. Do so. you like oversized t-shirt? Do you like yeah. more, something more fitted? Yeah. Do you like something more subtle? Do you like loud colorful stuff just yeah. you know throw it out there let us let us know but um before we finish uh i wanted to do um a quick lightning round so for this lightning round uh one sentence response oh what is you, know, you didn't tell like, me about I'm this gonna, no, i didn't tell you that's why it's a lightning round <laughs> okay um i'm an improv guy so i just assume everybody else is totally fine with answering questions they have no preparation for but that's that's me okay, okay. um so um uh lightning round just a quick response um, and uh, see where it goes, okay? Okay. So, wait, tell me the rules. What are the first rules? First rules, I'm just gonna ask a short question. You give me a short answer. Okay, like Anything really you fast? Want. Okay. Yeah, just like, uh, yeah, just first, first Can response. I curse? So, yeah, whatever. <laughs> let, me, let me take it out. Um, <laughs> first question What do you think of the black tea? Love it. Love it. Like, should I use a word to, dis to describe it? Yeah, whatever you want. Okay, bold and creamy. Okay, very good. Um, what's your favorite type of tea in general? Hong Cha black tea. Okay. And then um, if you could design a tanka right now, mm -hmm. what would you put in the tanka? I'll put a tea god. A tea god? What is the tea? Is there a tea god? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> we there, gotta find but one. But there, there is a uh, Tibetan it? deity called Ye Yi Fo Mu. Mm. So it's like a female deity and she's, wear, she's wearing nothing but leaves. Oh, okay. So and then she's be... supposed to be like a medicine. Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that yeah, would be a good fit. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Um, <laughs> what do you think is one thing that Chinese painting does well and one thing that Western painting does well? Western painting, I think the best part is the realism. Even, you know, back then. Yeah. Now, of course, everything is abstract. But realism from uh, the Renaissance period. Chinese painting, uh, I think it's more about the idea of it. And then it's harder to understand Chinese art because you kind of need to understand this artist, which is kind of like more like a modern art today. But I think that's the difference. And also I think they can go pretty well together. They both have their... Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um, AI and art, overall a good thing, overall a bad thing? Good thing. Good thing overall. Yeah. Very good. As an artist, what do you do to make sure you will not be replaced by AI? You need to get a foundation done. You need to know how to paint. You, can, you need to learn a rule to break the rules. Mm, very yeah. cool. Last question. Uh, if you had to name this monkey something, what uh, would you name it? Something that comes to my mind, but then it doesn't fit at all, it's Tao Tao. Tao Tao? Tao Tao. Tao Tao. Okay, Tao Tao. Like well, a peach peach, I guess? Peach peach. So, well, peach peach is yours. Oh, really? Enjoy. Oh, yeah. thank you, you so much. You can take it back with you. Oh, she, I think, I think and, he's uh, holding yeah, a peach. Tao, so, yeah, he's yeah. got a peach on there. So, um, oh, so cute. Very good. Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. Uh, remind everybody where they can find you online if they want to follow you. Uh, follow me on my Instagram. It's Boli Tashi. B O L I T A S H I. Great. And for you guys that want to support the project, for now, all you can do is wait, give us your feedback, but hopefully we'll be able to make this guy one set for you. 
and have merch coming out. And our, our personal goal is to have these available by Christmas. Yeah. Uh, it takes a long time to get this stuff done. And um, so I, I hope we can pull it off. So we will. We awesome. Will. We will. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a confidence we need. I'm, I'm too like lax as a businessman. We'll I'm just be like, eh, yeah. Maybe we make Christmas. Maybe we don't. It probably we really will. matters we that we make Christmas. So we'll, we'll get it if done. If you guys want it by Christmas, we'll get it done Yes, by exactly. So thank you so much. Uh, for those who don't know, my name is uh, Jesse. I'm your tea guy. All the stuff that you see on here, you can find up on the website. This Tibetan dark tea is on the website. It's also part of the subscription box that launched in August of 2024. And um, if you don't know what to get, the subscription is what I recommend because I pick three really good teas. They come at a massive discount if you get them together as part of the subscription. And uh, it's just a great way to get into tea and tea making. And you can do this with your own friends. You can make tea, have people over for a chat. It's a ton of fun. So uh, other than that, uh, I think we're good. I'm Jesse. Simon. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.